Yeah, I think we're recording now. It's Saturday morning. Uh, one of our Saturday morning chats, which hasn't happened for a long time. Mm. Um, how's your week been and what are you working on at the moment? Right. Well, how's my week been? I've had a week in Sweden and it's been nice to be home for a week. And uh, my daughter got back from Gran Canaria yesterday. So we're all, all going out tonight to... A melody festival and evening dinner and a heat of that's the Eurovision Song Contest to everybody else. They have all the heats on TV over here. Um, anyway, I've spent the week going around the block, sort of recapping. So it's something that I, when I get the time to do or feel the urge to do. I, I, I find it quite useful because I, I think you need to take a longer te- context, a longer timeline, as we've just be discussed before, to get a, a handle on the direction of travel. There's sort of a triangulation, context, motivation, seeing what people's actions follow words. And sometimes those actions can be several years after the words were initially spoken. So... Um, Going direct, as you know, is the BlackRock plan put before the pandemic um, to deal with the next financial crisis, which most people that follow these things agree started in September 2019 with the New York repo spike. Well, going direct, I made a mind map, sort of just covering some of the areas which I've studied and blogged about which is climate science, information technology, blockchain, um, and monetary reform. Okay. Now, and then the last four years, I've I've gone back to my um, profession uh, of of being a property developer. Uh Now, um, there's a brilliant book called... um, Land Policy, Money and Climate, The New Trifecta by someone called, I think it's Geraldine Ryan. It's a brilliant book. I've got it in Kindle. And I, I often read bits of it on the aeroplane when, when I'm coming back off to Sweden. Um, I'm going to put a screen share on. Um, I'm not sure how screen share works when you're just on voice, to be honest. Um, Oh, I'm sure it'll. I'm sure it will come on. Do you want me to look at it, or can I look at it later? Uh, switch screen. I want that one. Yeah, if you put share screen, it should come on. It should be. It should become the main screen. Right. Can you see the go and direct mind map there? Um. Hold on. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, if I do share screen, I can see my screen instead of your picture, and then you come in as a picture on the right. So I, I think obviously share screen doesn't work when you're just on voice only. Well, I can see. It's the only thing that I can see. You're in a little screen on the top left. I'm on the top so right. And this is the main it, screen. Can I can't right. indeed. Go I'm direct paradigm. That that really no login really required. Yeah. Anyway, so... The going direct mind map there, um, long story short, I've been using um, the brain, as it's now called, since it was called something, uh, the knowledge doc. And I think it's up to version 11 now. Um, And I was in touch with the people programming it before it was launched, right? Now, I... I've I've had several brains on there over the year and I years and the going direct mind map the going direct paradigm and I did another one called the home antics um, one which is basically about affordable housing and lots of lots of stuff and to do with that now they phased out version eight or nine whichever it was and I ported or had ported across 
the go and direct mind map and the hematics one is lost in the the ether at the moment the the hematics one is is by far the larger one now um there's a guy called um groves who uh has a pod quite a big podcast um who did a history um mind map which was very very good in fact if, if i just i'll get a version of it which is open on my stream so here here it is here uh all in the way there history here we are so the history blueprint model was done by richard grove right now he was an early whistleblower on 9-11 he 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 worked for i forget which one now it wasn't booze hamilton but one of the big data companies in wall street and all the rest of it and he blew the whistle on some of the futures trades which were actually on the airlines that crashed which made money which was kind of just a bit fishy right mm. and whatever so uh, Grand Theft Auto podcast or something's podcast. Or, so they're very long, but very good. Um, he's also got a website about tragedy and hope. And he did. He, he, he also did a lot of interviews with. Um, uh, right. Where are we? Um, It's gone blurred now. I don't think our signal's that great, Ren Jen. Uh, I can hear you absolutely fine. And the, audio, the audio is working perfectly. A lot of interviews with the guy that wrote all the books about education, the American guy, whose name again temporarily discovered. But, Do you mean John Dewey? No, 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 no. Um, Pierce. Uh, no. This is so annoying. Yeah, is it, it is the education of John? Ad is it the education of John Adams or something like that? No. Oh, I haven't refreshed on uh, Gato, um, John Taylor Gato or something. See, something like that. Gato. Anyway, he he wrote books about the basically the, the the ruination of of american public education um uh and and it's a very very good um good the guy wrote good books but also these interviews that richard grove did with him were, were very good um actually i'll just put in okay and um because because you right. know what the so, whole yeah. The, the point about that and the reason I ring it up is is it's a whistleblower thing. It's a um oh no, that's I didn't want to do that. Damn it. Right, I'm just going to get rid of that because it's using up a lot of power. Anyway, so they changed all the the stuff and I, I've only just managed now to get a link which is public that people can click on and click around that thing. Um, and I haven't worked out yet whether or not I can actually get individual nodes and do a public link to those. But the main link is now on the front page of the log that I've just done. That's why it's there. And Francis Leader sent me a message the other day, sort of saying, I need to get an account and a password to look at this thing. And I, I thought they were public ones. I, I do know now that that link is public and p people can go and look at it. Now, it links to all sorts of stuff. It links to people I don't agree with. But, but what it is, is it's my mind map of what the fuck 
it is that we're living through in on and with okay um and um as i say these recaps it's like revising for an exam or something you know um uh the the um it throws up interesting stuff that happens along the way like that interview of bill gates um on Ardha. you know i mean I, I i was looking at some old stuff today and i i, I didn't even remember he he specifically had done an interview on hard and I, and I hadn't even thought to look for one but you know there it was and and it uh, that hard thing that we talked about the other day by the way um uh quite a lot of people seem to have read that or quite a lot on substack you know 160 people read it or something on substack or, you know it's then like youtube that you know people click on things read a few words and then don't bother you know but as i say it's, it's, all this is all barking at the moon uh, you know um, none of this is supposed to change the world i have no expectation that it will um but it, it's uh, you know, talking as we do, it, it's almost a way of keeping safe or, or, you know, confirming that there's at least one other person in the world as insane as I am. <laughs> you, you choose which I think, I think, I think it would be bad form for me to say, speak for yourself on this occasion. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, the blog today, which is probably scrolling down. Okay. Um, Nation Cymru is a Welsh newspaper feed that I've got and, and it it sent me one about that uh, Liz Truss on the Steve Bannon thing um, whatever I think you sent me a link to that yesterday as well or was, you know, someone did um, mm. and it's kind of like a lawfare thing I mean so what if Liz Truss didn't say anything when Bannon said Tommy Robinson is some sort of hero um, we've had that discussion many years ago, you know, uh, as I say, I mean, I, 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 I say I, I, he's a better freedom fighter as he'd probably see himself than he is a theologist or scholar of Islam. But hey, you know, um, no, no, but Roger, hold on. I think um, it is significant if the former prime minister um, agrees with someone who talks about someone who's been done for anything in a favorable way i haven't watched the i haven't watched it i have i didn't even know about it until you told me i didn't know that bit existed it said in this newspaper article um she just she didn't say anything she didn't she didn't agree she didn't disagree she she didn't challenge him didn't call him out <laughs> you know i do you know I mean, I watched the thing the other day, Rishi Sunak in shirt sleeves, in the round with this conversation. Oh, that was on Russian brand as well. Some Glaswegian guy. So I say, look, I've been vaccine injured and all this sort of thing. And, and, and Sunak's doing his best sort of, you know, son of Blair, sort of brown, brown Blair impression. I don't know um, the specifics of the case, I'm afraid, so I will not be able to speak at length about it. I do, I do really hope that you do recover. I wish you all the best. All that, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, um, thinking of lawfare and getting rid of your competition <laughs> and all the rest of it, right, made me think about something. Bridgen said in his interview with with, with, with with Russell Brand yesterday, which also had Errol Nash, the doctor who's been unlicensed, um, pending further investigation in, into prescribing hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin during the pandemic. Um, anyway, Bridgen's an interesting character. One of his constituents came to him in the post scandal and, and, and tells a story. I don't think he features in the TV programme, Bridge, and it's another guy that, that, that they have as, as an MP who was involved. But Bridge is obviously on the empty step. But, Actually, yeah. for, you know you know what, on that, I again, I haven't watched it, but I understand the main person who gets the credit in that programme is 
the military guy, Lord Arbuthnot, who yes. was the chair chair of the defence committee for ages, and it's his wife that was overseeing the Assange extradition hearing. So really. He, for me, he is wow. military industrial complex, like at the highest level. That's like, you know, you know, with the tragedy and hope and stuff like that. He's definitely part of the people yeah. that control well, they everything. Would, they would put him into bat instead of bridging, for sure. Uh, exactly. I think in all this that my blog today is about, all, all of that is is really relevant to um, what 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 it's all about. Okay, so. Anyway, Bridgen says this at 37.35, at the, end of that half, at the end of that hour and a half meeting, I was told by the Conservative Party spokesperson, Andrew, there is currently no political appetite for your views on the vaccines. There may well be in 20 years time, and you're probably going to be proven right. In the meantime, you need to bear in mind you're taking on the most powerful vested interests in the world with all the personal risk for you, which that will entail. And I said, I think this meeting is over. And Russell Brand says, oh, that sounds like a bit of a threat. Well, of course it's a threat. Um, and the whips offices, the you know, the stuff about the um, paedophilia dossier that was given to ben, um, to, to, to uh, Leon Dixon. Britton. The yeah, Dixon. Dixon dossier, all of that stuff. Well, there was a, there, there, there was actually a, a, a television program that's sort of uh, looking at the whips office office there's there's a link to it on my blog somewhere um and and, and the, the guy on national television says well in the whips we kind of cover things up you know mps getting themselves into trouble with underage boys and stuff like that you know of course and then and we have a little block box but book so of course we can you know refer them to the trouble they may be in if they don't vote the right way all of that stuff well mm. that's how it works if anybody is surprised or offended by that well be offended don't don't be a don't surprise it is offensive but it's not it shouldn't be surprising anybody anyway so i just sort of just thinking through and a few things i i watched this i didn't expect to watch all of this yes it's 25 minutes long it's about a Italian film director who was assassinated in 1975, Pier Paolo Pasolini, um, who made a film. I didn't year. know. I didn't know. I didn't know he was assassinated because didn't he do? Um, did he do Sodom and Gomorrah? 120 days of Sodom. Yeah. Yeah. I so, didn't realize when was he assassinated? Did you say 78? In the mid 70s. I mean, people right. would. Being popped off like nobody's business in the mid seventies through the eighties in Italy, you know, with uh, uh, you know the Masonic Lodge at the Vatican and all that stuff, you know. Um, and anyway, um, here's a couple of quotes from from that video. Pasolini was assassinated by society in a savage act of self defence. A society that could not bear his defiance, his undisguised equation of commitment and light and life the hatred unleashed against him was expressed in the staging of the crime a public execution at high noon so that everyone might see um he, he basically was railing against consumerism um and was basically saying it was killing italy and he was actually saying italy was becoming worse than mussolini's fascist italy right so and then the, the, this is the guy that made this is what Pasolini seems to be saying is that the powerful have an incredibly tenuous grasp on power over themselves and their basis, basic urges and therefore quell their inner feelings of weakness by exerting force and violence on their perceived lessers, especially the nonconformists. Now, you know, the, the monopoly of the state on violence. You know that 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 is. Yeah, coercion, all the rest. Of it, the last resort is always violence. Right. So, in Italy again, Enri Enrico Matte. Okay. Again. Now he he was killed in a a, a plane crash. Bomb went off in his face. Okay. And and he he ran ENI the the Italian. Oil I didn't know oh, yeah. this, right? Um, 
Anyway, this is a famous quote of his. A little cat arrives where a few big dogs are eating in a pot. The dogs attack him and toss him away. We Italians are like that little cat. In that pot, there is oil for everybody. But someone does not want to let us get close to it. And, you know, so, and it goes on the Wikipedia article about him saying he intended to break the oligopoly of the Seven Sisters he broke an oil import deal with Soviet Union in the middle of the Cold War over intense protests from NATO. Um, in 1960, after concluding the agreement with the Soviet Union while negotiating with China, Matto publicly declared the American monopoly was over. Now, that's all happening at the same time that Charles de Gaulle gets the French gold back. You know, I was about to say Charles de Gaulle, actually. Yeah. So these are all... These are all events that lead into the Nixon shock and the last time we went through the sort of paradigm shift. So the going direct paradigm, it, that's a reference to paradigm shifts, right? Now, um, Meto made a and I a, a powerful company, so much so that the Italians called it the state within the state. Uh, he died when did he get killed? Can you tell me, when did he get killed? Please? 1962. 62 yeah okay right so obviously that's before the pasolini stuff but this is kind of a time it, it's sort of a timeline okay now the next on my list then comes ross albrecht okay the silk road guy now ross oh, albrecht, by the way before you before you before you go any further on him because I've been looking at the Assange stuff and maybe in relation to the fact that I saw that there's the Craig Wright trial and stuff like that, um, for some reason, he popped up on my feed. So I might have heard of him a while ago, but I just did not take very much in and didn't think very much of it. But then the other day I did look at his Twitter timeline and I saw a couple of telephone calls that he talked about that he's been having with his girlfriend and his view on the tragic essential loss of potential of the people who are in there for life um he seems to still have 40 years to go uh and he was silk road um yeah, yeah please carry and on. he's done 11 years of a life with an overall sentence effectively for um <laughs> well supposedly for aiding and abetting and condoning drug dealing and all sorts of nefarious stuff now um I think he's in the same bracket as Assange and the same bracket as Aaron Schwartz. And well, I think I the reason say, they're in the yeah, same bracket as far as the state within the state is concerned is to do with end-to-end -end encryption and the use of communications technology to empower people and bring prosperity as opposed to the reverse. It, it's in reverse at the moment. It's monopolising. It's um basically immiserating um and uh uh beggaring all of the users it's in shittifying our uh political economy i mean in a way in, in a way it sounds it sounds to me as though the silk road was like paypal and ebay omidyar and teal and musk uh, a bit like paypal and ebay but without the surveillance it was a distributed system on the tour network and julian assange was heavily involved in tour as well um i'm not sure about uh aaron schwartz but he invented rss feeds and all this sort of thing now ross albrecht in 2020 wrote an article uh, proposing something called zcan um, which is pronounced this is, from, this, is from, this is from in jail from in jail yeah yeah and what it proposes is a way that artificial intelligence or machine learning can anonymously uh, identify uh, abhorrent content on the internet and then just pop out the details of who to go and see now basically and he explains how neural networks work as a black box and nobody really knows how this stuff works um, or the logic that it constructs within itself after it's been trained to pop out what appear to be 
they're good guesses, basically. You know, they look calling them correct answers is is uh, is actually, I think, an incorrect way of looking. But, but basically, uh, on MP hard problems or even not MP hard problems, you can find that uh, by employing a trained mach machine learning algorithm, um, it will pop out good guesses. Yeah, I mean that that that's effectively. Um, but it, anyway, he, he's, he, here's this proposal, and I think this proposal that he's got here would work, right? What it does, it takes away the centralized power and control, and that's what end-to-end -end encryption does. Now, this answers the, 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 the state within the state's objection to that. So anyway, there's Ubrick's thing. So if we come down, um, I, I did a blog at the beginning of 2020, March 2020, uh, talking about um, various things, quoting John Stepling, um, the ruling class exists, it's not a conspiracy theory, they operate as a class too, they share the same values, the same sensibility, and in Europe and North America they are white. They act in accordance with their interests, which are very largely identical. The failure to understand this single gross problem and defect in left discourse today. This is Stepling, I think he lives in Norway, he's American. Uh, Sorry, hold on. Was Stepling the guy that you said was the 9-11 whistleblower? No. Pardon? Who's Stepling? Who's Stepling no, no, Stepling, no, no that, that, that was Richard Groves. Who's Stepling? So, Stepling is a pay, playwright that had a few articles on Off Guardian, but seems to have sort of disappeared again at the moment. I think he's probably shadow banned. I don't think. Okay, don't before think. you go any further, uh, may I say this is some really good work that you're doing here. Um, I appreciate the way that you've identified that uh, Ross Ulbrich has uh, come out with this paper and the way in which you're linking it in with the assassination of the ENI guy. Um, these are the two big things that you've told me today that you've not mentioned before to me and the way in which you've placed that in the context of Charles de Gaulle, uh, Nixon shock. It, it's a timeline. Um, it, it, it's a timeline, and there are various factoids which, which you know, and, and any fact or provable misdeed in isolation isn't going to tell you anything about the direction of travel. So this is emergence. This is heuristics. Yeah, you know, I, I got massively into heuristics in 2018. You know, which is the study of of uh of emergence now i i, I studied yeah. sound modeling and early onset algorithms with respect to actually modeling guitar vibration guitar tone right so an early onset algorithm okay so and so what so if you want an algorithm to detect pre-crime okay you have all these early signs or uh, uh, whatever and it all so this is what this precogs thing is about minority report all that stuff right now um there there are kind of lots of kind of diverse part parts and little facts but when if you put them all together and end up with something like say eat and mess you know which is meringue cream and ice cream i, I like eat and eat mess but it's it's like a mess it's not really a coherent dish as it were you know, it's certainly not a souffle. Now, um, so you can end up with just a bunch of a mass of green, slimy shit that you don't want to eat. OK, um, if you go too far with, with having a whole bunch of factoids or whatever. But slotting some things into a timeline, which is sort of subgroups or a class of of misdeeds or state crimes against democracy or you know proven conspiracies that have been not not necessarily prosecuted but but proven like for instance um uh the rigging of interest rates you know the uh, libor rigging you know i mean that, that 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 one was such a big one they've changed the name now you've got sonia 
Sophia and all this sort of thing, right? And I, I don't think they changed the name to make it better. I think they changed the name so people were taking several steps away from them being caught red-handed with their, with their hands in the till, right? Um, can, I, can I just quickly say on that, um, I don't know what's happened with that. I mean, I know that Sonia was created. Maybe it just means that someone else is in charge of the rigging now. And no, well, I mean, it, uh, it, 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 the, the whole system at, at its at its very heart is based on basically a Babylonian accounting system, which is double entry bookkeeping, um, which doesn't stand up logically. It means that you have to have a, a rule for them and a rule for us. And the banks operate in a banks operate insolvently uh, by definition of almost any other business um, would be insolvent if it was run like a bank, but banks are excluded from the rules of insolvency because it's it's like the yin and yang. To have this oppressive uh, debt-based monetary system, they have to operate by a different set of rules to everybody else, which puts them above the laws that apply to everybody else. And that is deeply democratic. And given that these people through their central bank digital currencies are the, you know, the men who would be gods, the masters of the universe, you know, um, I, I, I've got to say, I think it's a very bad idea. <laughs> you know, no one's going to vote for it. And, of course, that's why there's all of this um, uh, hand-wringing and, 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 and bedwetting going on about, you know, what Liz Truss has said or what Andrew Bridgen has said or what Ross Ulbrich did or yeah. what Julian Assange did or um, what Craig Murray did. You know, um, the list is endless. Harry Miller you know, you've got to what mind your thinking. We just came around to check your thinking. All of this stuff. So this is a long answer to your first question. What have you been doing this week? <laughs> well, this week, I've just been getting to this point because I'm going to knock it on the head and I'm going to go back and try and build some bloody houses. Um, you know, the country needs houses. You know, it doesn't need another Herbert on the Internet spouting off about, you know, uh, well, it's all rigged, you know, I, it is all rigged. But hold on I, a second. It is all rigged. And I, if you want I to build houses the other day, talking about it, they're building lots of houses in Texas, in, uh, in, in Houston, particularly at the moment. Why aren't they building them everywhere else? It's an article in the FT. And I, I sent an email back sort of saying it's, it is an interesting article. And I, I, I wonder who is funding this spike of housing in Houston and why, what, what, you know, um, it, it, I, I mean, I've got some ideas. I'm going to have longer term mortgages over there and all the rest of it. I, but, but it's it, 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 the, the problem that London has in building housing, the UK has in building houses it, it is, it is ubiquitous across all the G20 countries. I mean, even Sweden has got a, a, a uh, the problem as well now. So, Roger, may I, may I, may I say something in relation to this? Mm. Uh, and it's not supposed to be offensive. Um, I'm sure you will not take offence, but um, may I continue? You go for it, mate. Yeah. Yeah. If you have said that you, you know, what's the point of um, going on about how it's all rigged any further, uh, for example, or only doing that? Um, and talking about wanting to build houses, and you've had conversations with me about that, so I understand a little bit about it from based on what you've told me. Um, but um, surely, if things are rigged, at least in the census that you've shown me to do with planning and permission and things like that, particularly at that level, then um, if anyone believes in the rules, Surely they then find out that it's OK for leaving in the rules, but they're not going to. I, I think that's the problem with a statement as general as it's all rigged. Right. OK. I mean, it's it, the. The. 
there are always gaps in the pavement. There, there always are. I'm an entrepreneur. If, if, if it, I, I mean, I did a blog about four years ago saying, you know, what was it? Sh sh show me a, oh, what was it? It was quite a catchy line. I can't remember. Something about, show, was it show me an honest billionaire? Was it that one? No, no. It, it was, it, it, um, All right. Well, in that case, in that matter, case. But, but basically, you know, that there, there, there are always ways to, um, you know, universal rigging of everything through yeah, but legislation Roger, or yeah, but Roger, Roger, when well, you, when you, it, it, it when, really is not possible. Um, yeah, but Roger, that, when you built houses in the past, say in the nineties and the eighties, then surely you faced a completely different environment um maybe even it was just like a better environment at that stage and the environment has got progressively worse is that well, awesome? or is that is that ridiculous no it's not ridiculous the, the 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 planning system has degraded immeasurably since the 80s and 90s uh, but the main thing that's happened is the increased financialization and so okay. the the game has changed. The consolidation in the housing sector is accelerating. Uh, Barrett's are, are, are trying to, to uh, merge with, with, with Red Row at the moment. Now, Barrett's major shareholder, or one of them, is BlackRock. They're not so heavily in evidence on the Red Row side of that deal. Uh, BlackRock own uh, St. Modwin Homes outright. They took it private about two or three years ago. BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street and the usual suspects uh, are major players in the uh, UK housing market looking to consolidate their investment um, and further drive a, a, a wedge between truly affordable housing, housing for rent and profit, affordable housing for profit, that's the built to rent sector, which Lloyds are a heavy player in, okay, um, and what they what they what they're doing is they're they're centralising and creating a a false what's the word it's it, it, it's part of the social point system that these guys have got in mind is going to be what kind of house you can live in according to what status you're in according to where you are in the hierarchy right. And so the major house builders can be targets, one for already permissioned land, two for building um, building high status stuff as rewards for the higher up functionaries within the command and control economy. And then at the bottom end as well, um, you've got the, uh, the, 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 the same thing in terms of distribution of housing as a necessity and then exclusion from people as punishment or coercion of people from that basic human right of shelter right now in the context of the geopolitical and international political economy of all of this you find all of these policies at the un i've told you that countless times before and so um when 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 you analyze um, decisions that are made, like why the Bank of England has done what it's done with interest rates and it wrings its hands of saying, oh, well, you know, maybe there won't be a recession. Oh, we, we're not sure yet. I, you know, that that is designed to distress companies in the construction sector, in the house building sector, and then to pick off the weaker hands and then put them into the hands of people that are, um, serving the, the the greater centralization and monopolization leading to state monopoly capitalism and and this is you know uh, Pasolini's point in the mid 70s this is where this is headed so you know stuff like Gilles Deleuze and and, and, and you know the the spectacle guided ball um, these guys you know this is what they're saying now they're all Marxists so we're not supposed to listen to what they say um, 
Pussolini was a Gramscian. Um, so, you know, in terms of Marxist theorists, he, he, he's quite a famous one. Um, but, but, but um, you know, wh wh where they fit in, you know, I've read, you know, I've by no means read all of this stuff. It's, it's all quite long and all pretty boring. I don't know if you've ever looked in a Marxist forum or anything, it's fucking impossible. I mean, I've made that point you'd be for. Um, this is not bedtime reading. Well, I suppose it is if you want to go to sleep. <laughs> so, so, um, but the the sheer wrongheadedness, you know that, that you know that you know that I sort of said that how many things am I holding up? The old George Orwell thing, that that part of of the thought police of thought crime that that those parts of um uh you know oligarchic collectivism you know the the the, the book within the book in 1984 are, are just so real so anyway i don't know this screen is still up here's uh, the cyber solarium commission uh, which is about end-to-end -end encryption. If you, it's in this blog now. You can read the the relevant section of what they said. The whole okay. thing I've actually put for sharing, so people read the whole thing if they want to. I read it four years ago now, um, uh, and there are a bunch of people talking about it. I watched that, so you know these Herberts here are the sorts of people that think they're doing. Uh, you know, doing they're doing this all for our own good, but it, it's a little bit like Mao's Cultural Revolution. You know, we're almost at that stage now, um, Ranjan. Good okay, but, but, so, yeah, okay. So, I mean, I definitely been listening and enjoying and appreciating what you've been saying, context-wise, about the uh, construction firms and the consolidation at the global level, the UN's ideas, the shadow sector, as in BlackRock and all those stuff. I'm hearing all of this and then I'm listening to you say that you're looking for gaps in the pavement. Um, so the gaps in the pavement, it sounds like if that's a kind of metaphor for opportunity and analogy, then it sounds as though you knew where they were and you could just, it was a lot more of a level playing field in the past. And it sounds like everything that you're telling me is to say that there is far less of a level playing field basically that there just isn't a level playing field so where do you fit given that i i'm not i'm a free market entrepreneur i mean you know I, i'm a misfit mate i mean that's that that entrepreneurs are kind of misfits um but i'm an establishment misfit you know I, 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 entrepreneurs and uh, 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 are you know that i yeah, I can't really explain sorry, it. So, so, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. When I said, where do you fit? I'm sorry. When, when I said, where do you fit? I did not mean that as uh, where do you fit in society? I mean, because uh, we're mates, you know, like you are you to me. But where does your current business model, however flexible it might be? I'm talking about the gaps in the pavement. How's that going to work, given that there's no level playing field? Put it this way. The government can't go on not solving problems forever and just put in, you know, I, I mean, Michael Gove's got more front than Selfridges, isn't he? I mean, he, he, how he stands up and says some of the stuff he says, I don't know. Well, he's a journalist, I guess. But, you know, the, the, the simple fact is that um, the National Health Service is broken, the provision of enough homes in the UK, the system of delivery is broken. Both of them can be fixed, but to fix them, some powerful interests are basically got to be stopped from doing what they're doing, which is feathering their own nests at the expense of everybody else now. You know, there's no, there's no, there's no win-win in techno-fascist feudalism. There's no win-win, okay? But are you talking about, are you talking about a Sherman Act? what are you talking about what has to happen before well, the gaps start appearing in the pavement because they're not there now well i do you know that the point is um the house of commons could sort this out if it grew a pair you know whether you agree with andrew bridgen or not he stood up and you know that that 
he reckons there are about 20 odd MPs that, that he's in touch with. I, effectively, it's like the old, was it, uh, Dominic Cummings slogan, take back control, you know, but we've got to take back control of the levers, the constitutional levers, which are open to uh, subjects in our place as subjects of his majesty the king um you know citizens in the case of, 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 of republics right we we must take back control of the constitutional birthright the constitutional legacy left to us by our forefathers in our case which actually developed since the 1300s. Yeah, you know, we, we were early, we were early exitors from from feudalism, and we certainly don't really return to leading the charge. Okay, 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 okay. In, in that case, all I can say is, I think that um, from what you've told me, that um, you're talking about wanting to do the house building, but you also said that in order for anything to work, the House of Commons needs to grow a pair. Well. I don't actually see that happening at the moment. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen, and I'm not saying I would like to do anything to stop it from happening. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. I think part of our conversation relates to us wanting it to happen and us um, doing what we can to help it happen. Well, but you, see, you know, if you want to outline more what, what what's required, then do so. As a practical person and a practical thing, one of the things I am going to do when I go back is get the local constituency on Wikibama up and running for the constituency in Rhonda, Sin and Taff, where where I actually, you know, um, uh, live, 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 you know, my sister and my mum and my aunt and, and I, you know, in, in, in Wales. So that's a practical thing that I do intend to do and I do intend sure. to get 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 you know to, to to do that um and and just get involved at that level see who it is that's planning on standing see you know see see what the record is of our local mp for voting in the synod uh, you know and wales played a, a something of a curate egg on or uh uh the pandemic uh, but they started off in in a more of a Swedish way and ended up going full Nazi like they did north of the border, you know, with with, with um, uh, that lot. So you know, um, but that, so so yes, that's part of part of my plan is is to look at um, you know the local politics of it all, um, and you know continue that. I mean they. At local authority levels, there, there's good and bad. You know, there's um, there are a lot of positive initiatives in Cardiff going on around council house building and stuff like that. And that's, um, you know, something that, that I've been talking to the, you know, people involved about or whatever. So, I, you know, of course, there's always stuff that you can do and everything that's being done isn't bad. It's just the overriding trajectory of this and the uh, at the heart of it is is, is this black-hearted monetary system, which has served its purpose and is in, in you know basically they're switching it out, but what they're switching it out for is actually something far worse, and the one we already had was bad enough, right? So, um, you know, as I say, in all good operas, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. I love it. Brilliant. Well, um, what more did you want to say in relation to, I mean, I asked you what you've been up to, um, what you've been looking at, and wh where would you like it to go now? No, well, that that's about it, really. Um, this is a Corrie Morningstar article with this rather fetching gif on it of uh, an Octagon Jailer bot telesurveillance thing going on. Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development Report produced by the Rockefeller Foundation and Global Business Network. Not just the lockstep scenario, but all four scenarios. And that's what this is all about. And the, 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 the quote which I had in my blog there, uh, this quote here, Judith Rodin, president of the Rocker Foundation. Now she, she's written four or five economics books, one of them on money, 
uh, I'm not sure if it's still in print, had a very good chapter actually on how the money system actually does work. And of course she would know, of course she would, because she's uh, David Rockefeller's daughter. OK. Um. So, hey, there we are. So, you know, that that that's where I'm at. I mean, I, I kind of. Uh, um, yeah. I, and, and, you know, life's the living and getting on with it, really, isn't it? And that's 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 what I'm planning to do. Starting with a couple of beers, watching the Melody Festival and tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I was reading a an almanac of old, um, of, yeah, an old an almanac of events from uh, the years gone by, and I think it said that in 1974, um, ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest with Waterloo. Um, so uh, was that 74? Yeah. I, mean, I can remember watching that with our neighbours. We, we we were living in Hanover in Germany at the time. And, oh right. Uh, we, we watched that in their house in uh, Dickenstrasse or in Hanover with Barry and Elderbird. <laughs> yeah, I was also reading, um, I was reading some quotes this morning. Um, I saw uh, um, a Julian Clary quote um, where he said, the English love eccentrics, they just don't necessarily want to live next to one. Um, and then what? And what was the other one? There was a Chesterton quote: uh, "When the Bible tells you to love your enemy, uh, it also tells you to love your neighbour because they're generally the same person." <laughs> Very good. Right. Well, I'm going to have to get off. I need to have a cup of tea and uh, get on with the day, mate. So enjoy your walkies and. Uh, and on and on. Yes, thanks for sharing all that with me, Roger. Hold on a second. Um, I will uh, just quickly give you a bit of my background. Hold on, where is it? I'm trying to, uh, here we go. Oh, well, you've sorry. got a 20 mile an hour limit. You're not in Wales, are you? <laughs> You're uh, by 20 mile an hour speed side. Yes, exactly. So um, that's uh, hold on. That's me again. Oh. I'm on, just on. Um, I'm just on Kilburn High Road. Oh right, okay, County Kilburn. <laughs> yeah, well, there's. Um, if you look behind me, you can see the high street here is being uh, subject to some massive redevelopment. Um, can you see that? It says yeah. Cameron Cameron's Stiff, which I've always found a funny name for an estate agent. Cameron yeah. Stiff. <laughs> And that's double S, as in the stiff of Cameron, or it, maybe Cameron's yeah. plural. And that's next to that pig. <laughs> exactly. Another Bullingdon evening. Hmm. Um, wonderful. Um, oh, see, see. Interesting. The other day, the guy who runs Boots is a Bullingdon member in the same picture as Cameron and Boris Johnson. Apparently, I, I don't know. I was watched something the other day, and that's something they said. Well, actually, yeah. I know that you, you might have sometimes read the FT. There was a guy who was very big at the FT for a long time. I forgot his name. It was sort of Jonathan Elliott or something like that. But he was he was probably one of the fundamental business correspondents there. He was pulling mm. in too. Right. Um, right. Anyway, yeah. I must away. Yeah. I, I've got to go. Cheers. Take care. Enjoy your, enjoy your music. Bye.